Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. All right, this is going to be a reading on Trump's comments about the city of Milwaukee. On Thursday, he was meeting with House Republicans and called the host city for the uh, RNC a horrible city. Um, these comments were first reported by Punchbowl's Jake Sherman and confirmed by NBC News. Um, the Trump campaign, <laughs> this is great, denied that he called the city horrible saying that these reports are a total lie. <clears throat> um, but the campaign also said President Trump was explicitly referring to problems in Milwaukee, specifically violent crime and voter fraud. Well, did he say it or did he not say it? And what context? And this is one of those things with Trump where he just says random stuff without any clarification, and then it's up to the, the listener to interpret what he said. Um Republican Rep. Barry uh, Brian Steele of Wisconsin reported that Trump's uh, reported Trump's comment that Milwaukee is a horrible city. I was in the room. President Trump did not say this. There's no better place than Wisconsin in July. Other congressional Republicans tried to explain and contextualize Trump's comments rather than deny him. Um, Rep. Derek Von Orden of Wisconsin said that the president was specific, specifically referring to the city's crime rate, while others reportedly said Trump was speaking about election integrity. Well, which is it? Did he say it or did he not say it? And how do you know he was talking about crime? How do you know he's talking about election integrity? You know, he said Milwaukee's a horrible city. I don't doubt that for a second. Trump is now on Truth Social saying he never said that, and it's just another Democratic hoax and gaslighting by the Democrats. So did you say it or not? And if you didn't say it, why do you have a bunch of Republicans saying that you said it, but it was in regards to election integrity or it was in regards to uh, crime? You know, it's just, they talk out of all sides of their mouths for this guy. It, this is his dementia manifesting. Does he believe that he said it? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't believe he actually said it. Uh, and maybe showing him clips would just say it's fake news, even if you told him Republicans recorded it. So let's look into Trump's Milwaukee comments. Is this just more of the same of his dementia? I, there's no, I, I don't understand why he would lie about this. So uh, that doesn't make sense. And if it's something that's out of his control, that's another thing. But the Republicans are lying for him. So there's all sorts of things to look at this here, okay? Entertainment purposes only. The emperor appears to have no clothes, but a bunch of Republicans are saying that he's fully dressed. <clears throat> In red or blue, take your pick. All right, what's the energy around Trump's Milwaukee comments? Heartbreak, betrayal, backstabbing. He, he made the comments. I mean, there's no reason why... The reporter from Punchbowl would say he made the comments if he didn't make them. <clears throat> At that point, it's just damage control. How do you minimize the damage of these insulting comments that he makes you know, a month before <laughs> the, the, national, the RNC is going to be there? I think this right here is a illustration of what we can come to expect a month from now in Milwaukee. It's going to be ugly, okay? Crossed with the Ace of Swords. This is the, the beratement that he does, and then the justification crossed with the emotions underneath it. Um, Trump probably feels very justified in saying what he says about Milwaukee, and Again, running on pure emotion <clears throat> and not keeping his emotions in control. But I also think underneath it are the uh, the GOP members doing damage control, trying to justify the unjustifiable, right? And so, and trying to put a spin on it to make it make more sense. But they're. <laughs> They're attacking, you know, everything's emotion. There's nothing left brain coming out of Trump these days. It's all right brain. It's all the emotion stuff. There's no logic. There's no, um, there's no critical thinking coming through this. 
he, he's losing his mental acuity. And again, I think part of it is just the pressure of all these court cases are weighing on him. He's losing, he, he doesn't have the ability to logic his way through anything here. In the past, we've got the Six of Cups. Trump was rejected in 2020 by uh, Milwaukee and Wisconsin. And I'm sure he's bitter about that. And, you know, pretty much Trump with any democratic city any blue city he attacks them he's you know they're they're horrible they're terrible they have high crime you know they're they're poop holes to live in basically which is completely and utterly not true but you know that's what that's what feeds his base it makes the rural folk feel better about themselves and gives them somebody to hate so why not that there's no downside for him acting this way is the problem But this is also his um, his base is always very forgiving of his comments and his uh, cult psychophant members in the house are also very forgiving with his comments. Current situation is the page of Pentacles. So when he messes up and says something that he's really thinking, and again, it's it's all emotional based. Um, they have to go out and do the damage control and try and spin what it is that he's saying. You know, he's talking about not Milwaukee, but the values of the bad things going on in Milwaukee. You know, it's uh, it's crime ridden. So the the values aren't there to from the police department led by these Democratic mayors to protect their citizens. Uh, election integrity. Well, there's no evidence of that, but okay, fine. That clearly the only reason why Democrats won is because they cheated. You know that thing it's it's the same old tired values but neither one of them makes sense in the context of the of the statement that he made you know oh, milwaukee is a terrible city and they don't clarify you know they they let uh election integrity go thing go uh wild it's crime ridden and then the worst part is as these guys come out with their uh with their uh their justifications for why he said Milwaukee is crime ridden. Trump goes out there and says, I never said that. So now these guys have egg on their face because they've been undercut by Trump. You can imagine how frustrating it must be to be, you know, talking about the emperor not being naked in front of you because, and I remember this story as a kid. I mean, we've all heard the emperor's, uh, who wore no clothes. Some robber basically sold him an invisible suit for a high amount of money. And then, you know, the emperor's out there naked in front of his court. And he asks them what they think of his suit. And they're like trying to figure out the tactful way of, of praising him for, uh, for his suit, even though he's been conned. And some say, oh, it's a beautiful shade of red. And the others say, no, it's a beautiful shade of blue. And now there's an argument on the color of the suit that's invisible. Because he's not wearing a suit, he's naked. And like some little kid comes over and says, why is the emperor naked? You know, that's the basic gist here. So, you know, you've got these guys, oh, it's a new suit, it's red, it's election integrity. No, it's blue, it's crime ridden. And then the emperor's like, it's neither of those colors. I'm not wearing a suit at all. Now these guys are like, oh, what do we do with this? How do, you, how do you defend somebody who keeps undercutting you? But it's been that way the whole time. It's just that the Republican uh, cult members, they just let it go. If Trump says the sky is blue today, they agree. If he says it's green tomorrow, they agree. If he says, I never said it was blue or green, it's really purple, they agree. The pretzels that they will contort themselves into is amazing. The overarching energy is the Four of Cups. Trump lives in this world where... He, he, he'll say, he'll talk out of both sides of his mouth. He'll say, you know, the, again, the sky is red one day and the sky is brown the next day. And depending on where the poll numbers are, he'll, he'll say, oh, I always told you the sky was red. And then the next day, if the brown sky is leading the poll, he'll say, well, you can see that I clearly backed the brown sky. Um, I think in some ways that the house members, they're getting tired of, <laughs> of trying to cover for him. They can't keep up with him emotionally. I think the voters in Wisconsin 
and Milwaukee are going to be, they're not going to be satisfied with the explanations being given to the point where the Democrats are actually purchasing billboards, like a dozen billboards, uh, quoting Trump, throw it out there for everybody to see. And that's why Trump's backpedaling, because the optics look bad. And Trump, for all his insanity, understands where optics work. I think this is kind of his insanity card here. His emotions are overcoming any logic that he has. He's he's lost his mental acuity. It's 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 gone. And now he just runs on pure emotion here. So I don't think the voters are happy with it. And this is even Trump just you know, denying that he ever said something that he said. <sighs> the lesson to be learned is the seven of coins. Trump's health it definitely needs to be evaluated. This is another example of his dementia being put on display for everybody to see. His, his mental faculties are declining. He's working on emotion. I, I'd have to look up I haven't done any reading on dementia. Forgive me. I can watch uh, Shrinking Trump, I suppose, and learn a whole hell of a lot from those guys. Um, but I'm curious if if the dementia, if it can impact one half of the brain, if it can impact the left side of his brain, that's his critical thinking part, and just you know degrade it or shut it down or power it down so that he's only on either the creative side. I don't even think it's that. I think the whole... The whole brain, the whole frontal lobe shutting down, and he's in the lizard brain. I, th I think that's where he's at right now. Um, again, it, it just some um, a small amount of empathy for this guy. I, I realize it's hard. But imagine the amount of pressure that he is under with all these court cases. All, you know, he's... he's uh, he's on the hook for almost six hundred million dollars between, um, or five hundred million dollars between E. Jean Carroll and uh, the the civil trials. He's just been convicted. He's a thirty-four time felon. Could be looking at some prison time. He's got three more court cases that he knows he's going to lose because he knows he's guilty of all these things. He's allegedly running for the presidency of the United States. It's more of a, a, a campaign. Uh, it's more of a finance uh, charity drive than anything else to help pay his legal bills. Um, you know, he's wondering if he's going to be incarcerated. How does he get out of this situation here? He's under a ton of pressure and his mental faculties are declining. He, he's, he is slipping into madness. And he's got to deal with all that. You know, and so like this, mis these misspeaks are, are the least of his concerns. These, I, I kind of missed the day, you know, I was just thinking about it this morning. I missed the day where this would have been uh, a campaign ending thing. You know, I remember um, uh, talking about uh, if you smoked marijuana, that was the end of your presidential career. Uh, Gary Hart and having an affair, that was the end of his political career. John Edwards, wife dying of cancer. You know, I think it was, if I remember correctly, uh, like a recorded conversation or something like that where he was telling his mistress, just hold on a little bit longer, she'll be dead soon, and then you can move in. Career ending. You know, Trump, porn stars and affairs on his pregnant wife, um, grabbing women by the genitalia, telling, so, you know, the affairs are an, I, apparently aren't a thing anymore. Uh, uh, calling cities terrible. <laughs> you know, hey, um, who was the... Um, the Democratic guy who uh, won Iowa, Howard Dean. It was Howard Dean. Yeah, woo -hoo. he said he said woohoo, <laughs> showed a little enthusiasm. Career ending, non presidential. Those don't those all seem so quaint <laughs> that that's all it took to to derail your presidential candidacy was going woo like Ric Flair from the WWE or a WCW. I think is more where Ric Flair was known for. Regardless. The values, you know, his health needs to be evaluated. The Republicans' values are just all over the map because they're tying themselves, they're tying the Republican values to somebody who has no values and changes what he said, will lie right to your face and then you're left covering for him. It makes you look like the idiot. The outcome is the hermit. Um, 
the voters saw what happened, but I think Trump is retreating. He is retreating into his cave. More and more, his emotional his emotional state is deteriorating. His mental state is deteriorated, but his emotions are now dragging down too. He's 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 shrinking right before our very eyes. Um, back on that uh, Trump health event that I've talked about for a while, um, I always assumed it was going to be a catastrophic health event for us all to see. Uh, that could have been a mistake on my part. This dementia that he is ex showing to all of us could very well be the health event because it's out there for all of us to see, right? And it's just watching him put his foot in his mouth time and time again. Deny saying something that we all can see he said. Now, I don't think there's video of this. So basically he's denying it because... You know, there's no video, so you can't prove it. But the fact that folks in the room are saying he never said it. Well, he did say it, but he meant crime in the city. Oh, he did say it, but he meant election integrity. Well, which is, which is it? Y'all were in the room. One guy says he didn't say it. Two other guys say he said it, but this is what he meant. <laughs> oh, you can't. <laughs> I just, it, it's it's sad because it's scary because we're, we're subjected to this our democracy is at stake but at the same time you know if this was a comedy movie and you knew at the end of the movie your your government was still there like you know literally because it's a movie it, it, it it's funny in its patheticness <laughs> it, they're just pathetic his psychophants are just pathetic all right um What's the energy around the folks in Milwaukee? How did they? How are they looking at this? Especially with the Democrats and the billboards. <sighs> Six of coins. I think Milwaukee is way more concerned. You know, some people. Some people are going to be upset about it, but I think they're way more concerned about well, what's the president or the presidential candidates going to do for Milwaukee? I don't know if Milwaukee is under some. Uh, economic stress right now, but I think they're more concerned about economics and social programs, you know, social security, welfare, than they are worried about Trump. Trump's uh, saying it's a crappy city to be in. No, it's a, it's a disaster. I think Milwaukee, honestly, Milwaukee is still ready for the RNC to come in. Because it's going to bring a lot of money in. Now, granted, a lot of that money will stay with the hotels and the convention centers. But some is going to come to uh, to restaurants, to service workers, and things along those lines. <clears throat> so despite what Trump is saying, and despite the Democratic billboards, I think that, generally speaking, Milwaukeeans are ready to let the RNC come in here and spend their money. I think economically they're looking for that. At the same time, I think the folks in Milwaukee kind of want the RNC to show up so that they can defend their city. It's like this place isn't a disaster. And you guys coming here can see that. I would be, <laughs> and not only that, but also the undercurrent of the RNC is there's going to be fighting. Oh, it's it's going. It, I I'm surprised I haven't gotten the hillbilly brawl card yet. Maybe spirit just doesn't want me to really lose my pee in my pants here, laughing so hard. But um, I think they're gonna. The Milwaukeeans want to defend their city and show their city is fine. It's not a disaster. But at the same time, you know, normally they would say get out of here, carpetbaggers, get the heck out of here. But I think they need the financial help. In the past, you got the Nine of Wands. Uh, I'd have to look it up to see if how Milwaukee is doing economically. There's there's uh, a weariness here, some concern about what's coming down the pike. You know what? I'm gonna abort. I'm not gonna abort. I'm gonna pause this video just long enough to see what the economic situation is, Milwaukee, to see if I'm on track. Hang on for a second. Okay, looking it up, they describe it as stagnant at best during the first quarter of 2024. Um, overall job declines continued. 
Um, March's decline was this uh, um, article from March was higher than February. Six of ten major industry sectors um, had job declines. Uh, seasonally adjusted unemployment rate rose 0.5 percent. Manufacturing hours increased, but the uh, hourly earnings decreased. So working more, but working for less money. Um, and housing is mixed. New car registrations have decreased. So yeah, I think it's there's concern about the economy there. Come on back down again. I think this is about their economy. Their economy needs a boost, and this will bring a boost at least on the short term with uh, with that coming on. I think Milwaukeeans are looking in, into the future. They're a little bit concerned about about um, their economy here. King of Swords is the current situation. You know, if Trump wants to say this city is a disaster, fine. Come over here and, and say it to our faces. And, you know, watch Trump backpedal and say, I never said that. That's a horrible thing. It's just democratic lies. <laughs> you know, and then you, you look at these psychophants that uh, defended him. I, if I were a reporter, I would just be going after him. Saying, "Hey, he said he never said that. Yet here you are saying he did. What's the matter? Are you are you a fake Trumper?" You know, I would hold their feet to the fire, watch them try and no comment themselves right out of disaster. But you know, the voters will decide. The voters will decide what's going to happen there. Doesn't in some ways it doesn't really matter what Trump says because he says a bunch of BS. The voters are going to decide though. The overarching energy is the Seven of Swords. Um, I think th there's going to be a bit of a voracious uh, uh, Trump. I think if Trump settles on anything, he's going to say it's due to voter election fraud. And I think the government leaders are going to come out and defend their, their election integrity. Um, yeah, it's and that, uh, well, if this is both. This is everything's being stolen. Your votes are being stolen. Your money's being stolen. Crooks are everywhere. They're all Democrats. That type of thing. Um, that's that. I do think the Republicans are going to fall back on that messaging. Trump's going to deny he ever said it, but then Republicans are just going to stick to their guns and say, "Well, this is what he said." No, ignore the fact that he's denying he ever said that. And then Trump will probably change his mind again and say, well, what I meant by I never said that was I never said that, uh, uh, <laughs> that, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not even going to justify it. The man's crazy. <laughs> He's just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. The lesson to be learned is the world card. Uh, bringing things to an end. Um, we've got the convention coming over here. Uh, Honestly, is it going to do a lot for Milwaukee's economy? Yeah, a little short-term bust, a little burst. I, you know, it would be funny if if Trump and his campaign don't pay their bills. I think there's going to be some financial problems here. I think some folks are not going to be paying the bills. You know how Trump always, you know, he has his parades or his thing and then he doesn't pay for local law enforcement. I think we're going to get more of the same. That there's going to be bills not being paid by this campaign. Um, the lesson to be learned is the world card. What are you supposed to learn from, from this? You know, you need to listen to what's being said. You need to listen to how people are reacting to these things. You know, play the tape all the way through. What is, you know, Trump says he, sa he says something, then he didn't say something, yet all these people are defending him. In the end of the day, you know, what are they saying about your, your state? What are they saying about your city? And judge them for what they said. Hold them to their words. Don't let them sneak off and say, oh, I never said that. You heard it with your own ears. You read it with your own things. And then vote your values at the end of the day. I think what's going to... Yeah, I think first off, I think uh, some of these bills... Because <laughs> guess what? You know, the RNC should be paying for this, right? And Lara Trump is in, in charge of the RNC's finances, which is all to re-elect uh, Donald Trump. And Donald Trump never pays his bills. 
there's speculation about his teleprompters failing, so or he claims they fail so that he doesn't have to pay the subcontractors who put them up. So maybe the subcontractors are saying, fine, you know, they have a kill switch and they kill the teleprompter and then make Trump uh, ramble for a while. Um, but I think there's, you know, there's backroom dealings and such. I don't think, I don't think he's going to be, they're not going to be paying their bills because Trump doesn't pay their bills. I think they're going to get screwed on the money. Uh, people need to get together and discuss things. Um, I think, and I also think Milwaukee's economy is going through some hard times. I really do think they're going through some hard times. And whatever expected boon they were expecting to get from this, maybe they get a little bit, but they don't get enough. I'm sorry, that reading's kind of all over the place here. And it might be because it's layered in that regard. But um, folks in Milwaukee need to decide what their values are and what uh, Trump and the Republicans are, are bringing to Milwaukee. You know, they chose Milwaukee to have their convention and then their presumptive candidate saying that it's a disaster city. Well, that's kind of insulting your host before you were even there. And how would he know? And then, you know, then he tries to say he never said that. And that, but you've got people that defend him saying, well, he did say that, but this is what he meant. You know, hold, the, hold their feet to the fire. Make them answer the question. And the, if Trump says he didn't say it, then say, Trump says he didn't say that. So if he didn't say that, if that's true, then why did you say he said it and tried to justify why he said it? Look him right in the eye. And then wait. Then, then you shut up and you wait for the answer. <laughs> this long pregnant pause <laughs> brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it got a month to go. I'm going to be reading more on this RNC uh, convention because it has all the hallmarks of being a complete and utter disaster. And I think we're here for that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for your likes, shares, comments, everything you do to feed the YouTube algorithm so that this video makes it out to a wider audience. To folks discovering this channel recently for the first time, welcome to the channel. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.